The Fantasy Cup could have been also named Azumarill Cup, so today we're going to try to punish everyone who tries to use an Azumarill with our Katana. And I was rarely that excited to showcase a video like this, but today honestly the gameplay is just insane. This Pokemon was even way better than I expected. And we're starting off actually pretty weak here. We're going to have the Seisop by the way for this team of the Tapu Fini. Yes, you can use Azumarill as well, which I actually would not really recommend you. What I rather would recommend you is Flygon, but because I already made a video where we basically had the exact same backline with Flygon as well as Eternator, didn't we want to do this? So today we're going to take a look here at the Tabofini as a safe swap, which also functions pretty well. As you're going to see here, I'm going to be able to get both shields from the opponent if they want to realign, otherwise I can realign, and I'm totally okay with this, because what do you have to do basically? You have to try to get a shield advantage with the Katana if you don't win the lead, because Katana can even go through like bad matchups as long as it's not a counter user, which you're going to see here coming in, which is kind of awkward. You're going to be fine. But let's see what they're going to have in the back here afterwards as well. But yeah, we're going to see as well. This team is insane. Like, this team worked so, so well for me. Um, struggled a little bit in the first set that I played, but afterwards I completely demolished opponents. I think I had a seven game win streak with this team as well, which was absolutely wild. And here we're going to see that final Pokemon being the Azumarill going to be so amazing for us. I say decide to forfeit. Honestly, the damage against the Azumo should be illegal. It's literally doing like charge move damage nearly. But again, we're going to have a horrible lead here. We're going to swap out into our say sub of the Tapu Fini. And we should be able to outspeed the opponent. Maybe not. Uh, the opponent is going to outspeed us. They can go for a Dread Run here. Going to do some very decent damage and they decide to swap out into the Slurpuff. I'm okay with this because um, if I can hit this Moonblast, I should be able to realign, which will be great for us because, of course, we have um, the Eternator in the back, which is going to be great for the S Cavalier. So we decide to use a shield here. We're going to see the energy ball coming through, but we will be able to knock them out. And so we can even still reach a surf against the S Cavalier. We should be able to get rid of the first shield of the opponent as well with this. And so I can swap out because the opponent is switch locked and I decide to let this move go through. Why is that? Because I need a shield still for the Katana. Katana really shines in like the, the two shield and one shield scenario and as you can see the opponent is going to have the azumarill in the back so we're going to be in a prime position here to sweep them with the katana and as you're gonna see here right now the damage output of razor leaf from this pokemon is just absolutely insane like this pokemon has one of the highest attack stats in the game and so we will be able to easily win this game Let's take a look at the next opponent. We finally have the lead that we want to face the Azumarill and they're staying in for a little bit and swap out now into the Flygon. But look at the damage output here. I could have actually decided to stay in as well and just play it out and just use one shield and farm them down. But I decided to go ahead and swap out into my Tapu Fini. I think the opponent forgot that we have Scorching Sands now. I know Earth Power does a little bit more damage, but Scorching Sands, in my opinion, is still a little bit better. But like this, yes, we're going to have a shield disadvantage, but we have to realign basically now. We can still go for the Moonblast. We still have a lot of health on our opponent. Pokemon and so the opponent is kind of stuck here now with basically their final Pokemon and two shields and I'm not sure what this Pokemon going to be but we will most likely find out very soon. Play rough coming through. We can still try to go for the Moonblast. I'm actually going to keep the Moonblast. And they're going to have the Turtonator in the back. This is the worst possible Pokemon that we could have encountered. And yeah, this is a team that I showcased as well before. So maybe it's my own fault with that then. But yeah, we're going to have only our own Turtonator in the back. And this is not looking too good. But today, the games will be very, very fast. This team was able to win very, very quick for a lot of the games. But here we're going to have to go still for our own Dragon Pulse. They can, of course, use a shield here. We still have some energy on our Tapu Fini, but not enough. And so this is kind of sadly an unfortunate matchup. If I just went ahead and farmed on the Flygon, which I should have done, um, I would have been easily able to win this game most likely, but I didn't. So this was my own mistake and I definitely learned from this. So, next time if the opponent swaps in their Shadow Flygon, you kind of want to stay in. Here we would have a Flygon as well, and I kind of want to stay in as well for a little bit at least. And I can try to swap onto a Charge Move here, and this works out great, as you can let this move go through. They're not Shadow, they're not going to do as much damage, it's just going to be the Dragon Claw anyway. We're going to have now a ton of damage already on the Flygon, which actually kind of put them already into the Incinerate downrange from our Turtonator. But also, we're going to get out the Azumarill, and we're going to even get the Attack Drop from the Moomlas. It usually only happens against me, but today... Day. Oh, it's going to be our lucky day as we will be able to now take also the player from the opponent. They can still go for another one, but I can farm them down afterwards, which is going to be amazing as we're now going to have a move start onto our katana as well. Let's see what they're going to swap into. They decide to swap into 
we will find out shortly. It's going to be a Magnezone. I make a pretty bad mistake there because I went for like two fast moves and gave them basically a free Volt Switch with that. But I can still try to get some damage onto them with the Turtonator. And here's the thing. Turtonator is the hardest answer basically for the opponent's Magnezone. Every single move is going to be resisted. And so I decide to use both of my shields in for like my Turtonator here. And I don't really care too much what the opponent tries to do here. I can just go for another charge move. Maybe I can still go for some more charge moves afterwards as well. But I should have just maybe went for the full farm down. But actually I think I even get to the next charge move here in time should be able to reach the overheat ah uh, maybe let's see if the opponent is going to knock me out here still it's never going to knock me out and so we can win this game with an overheat and we can move on to the next one tornado sweeping end game here Next opponent, uh, let's take a look here what the next opponent is going to have against us. We're going to have the Magnezone in the lead. This is something where you can actually stay in for a little bit. As, um, yes, you're going to do resist the damage, but they also do resist the damage. And you see already your fast move doesn't really look like resist the damage, does it? So, yeah, the opponent goes to a mirror shot and make a very, very risky play. I stop into the Tapofini onto a charge move. It could have been the wild charge. It is just the mirror shot. This is very lucky. Not that lucky that we're going to get the attack drop here. But that was kind of maybe unnecessary. But yeah, it kind of worked out. It kind of didn't. Of course, the attack drop really hurts me now. Because in this matchup, the opponent is not as scared of like taking a Moonblast now. And they might be even able to farm me all the way down. Which is going to be a little bit of a trickier one. But if we are lucky, we maybe have a decent matchup with our turn knight on the back. We have to see. Can still go for a surf here, which most likely does not get a shield from the opponent. But let's see what they're gonna do. Yeah, exactly. I gonna swap out. I can still go for the leaf plate, which is going to guarantee basically a shield. And I can get some more fast move damage in, which maybe puts them even into incinerate down range. Because they cannot go for two charge moves back to back. They still have to go for one more fast move now. But they actually decide to swap out into the flygon, allowing me to go for another charge move here. And it looked like a CMP tie. And is it a CMP tie? It is not. And I was so confused by this because it really looked like it because the opponent didn't get an extra fast move in there as well. But like this, sadly, the opponent is going to be able to reach an earth power, which is kind of why they run a still here against me and so they can win this game. Well, let's move on to the next opponent. Again, we had like a little bit of a more tougher time in the beginning, even though we still um, went with like a few wins there as well, which is kind of nice. But like afterwards, like I had a seven game win stick with this team, which is absolutely wild. And um, here we're going to see one great matchup actually, which I would also recommend you to play out like this. If they stop out into the S Cavalier, go into your turret night and don't shield. Because a lot of times, I think here we already saw exactly the type of Finny in the lead. A lot of times you just have a hard answer for this Pokemon in the back. And so it's not really worth to use a shield onto the drill run because you can actually still survive it here the opponent is going to um, allow me to go for another charge move they are not lagging here they just wanted to wait out the clock i feel like um, but it doesn't really matter because he got them solo already that even the fast move of the tabo fini is going to be enough but i think this was like one of the most awkward games i've ever played and you're going to see it here as well I think it was at least this game. Like, it, it was something where I was like, ah, oh, do I even want to show this? Because it's, like, kind of embarrassing. But we will see. We will see. We will see. We will see the surf coming through and getting the shield, which is already nice. I couldn't go for another surf, which is going to get a shield as well. And at this point, I don't really care to, about my Tapu Fini. Like, I know that I have a ton of energy already on my Katana. I know that the opponent's um, Tapu Fini is kind of energy dry. I know that the Skarmory can only have, like, a Sky Attack now. And I know that I can go for a Night Sash pretty, pretty fast. And... What can I say? Like, it is, like, so annoying. I should have, like, I should have played maybe a little bit better and waited out. But, yes, of course. Like, we went so many fast moves up because I expected the opponent to catch. And then they catch completely on a random timing. And I'm just barely missing out on the KO with a Razor Leaf. Like, honestly, that was so sad to see. On It just, it just killed me inside. But yeah, we're going to have some better runs now coming up. We're going to have a Flygon in the lead. Again, you can stay in for a little bit. If they go for the Dragon Claw, you can actually still survive it. But you still use a shield. If it's going to be a Scorching Sands, it might be a little bit awkward. It's going to be the Dragon Claw, but I would be able to farm down anyway. In comes the Reggie Steel. Against the Reggie Steel, you can just let this move go through. Like, they don't really do anything against you. And you should always go up to 100 energy first before throwing an Overheat. Because the opponent cannot get to a charge move before that, they will outspeed you to the next one though. So like if they want to shield up here, they would be able to still get a shield from you. Or, or like you even let this move go through and then farm them down with the Tapu Fini. 
both is fine. But I'm even going to be able to still go for another dragon type move here with the dragon pulse against the opponent's flygon to get the shield, which is amazing. And so they go for the full farm down, but I can swap out here into my Tapo Fini, hoping that this is going to be a dragon claw, which it is going to be. And they swap out into their own Azumarill, <laughs> and it is just like so sad to see. Like, honestly, like the way the Azumarill's health is just going down is just absolutely wild, and we can now easily win this game. Next opponent, let's see what they're going to have for. So you're going to have the Azumarill in the lead and we're going to punish them here immediately. They swap out into the Lucario and I make a mistake with that one. I should have went for sure into my Tapu Fini. If they go into a Lucario, please make sure to go into the Tapu Fini and try to win this matchup because the likelihood of them having Escavalier in the back is pretty high and Escavalier really needs to go up against the Turret Knight. Like it's still okay for like the Tapu Fini and like two shield scenario because you do a ton of damage with your fast move. But if your kind of shields down already, it's going to be a tough time for you. So here yeah, that was definitely a mistake and definitely was not really ideal. And also we're going to see here that I tried to swap out, which didn't work out actually, but they're going to go for a charge, which I kind of found surprising. But as you can see here, the opponent swaps into their final Pokemon. It's not the S Cavalier. I knew that they would swap out immediately. That's why I swapped immediately into my Tapu Fini and not even into my other Pokemon. But it's going to be actually the Stunfisk, which is kind of cool. Because, um, yeah, S Cavalier would have been really, really tricky for my Katana as well. But Stunfisk is actually super fine. We can just go ahead, go for a charge move here. And I would be even able to let the next move go through, then swap out and maybe farm them down with my Katana even. And like, I don't know, like there are so many options here now to win this game because I have already a little bit of energy here. I will be able to just go for the full farm now. This could be, of course, an earthquake. And let's see, it is going to be an earthquake here. So yeah, we're going to be able to shield this one up. We're going to be able to still go for the leaf blade. And so the opponent's Azumarill is going to go down. Next opponent coming through, let's see what they're going to run here. We're going to have the Reggie Steel in the lead, which is of course pretty awkward, so we have to swap out into the Tapu Fini. But in the um, Great League, actually this matchup is not as bad as you might expect, because as we're going to see here, the Surf kind of puts them already at the halfway mark, but I'm still going to decide to let this move go through. And this might have been a mistake, it might have been not a mistake, we will find out very shortly, but the opponent's um, Reggie Steel is already pretty low, which is kind of nice. I can hit and incinerate on them as well, which is really good for me. I can just go for the overheat against the Azumarill. And what I'm gonna try to do now is I have to kind of wait until the opponent tries to throw their own charge move, which you're going to see as well, because otherwise, like, I have to use too many shields with the Katana, which I don't want to. And I'm also still gonna go up to another charge move, so I can maybe swap out later on. And um, then go ahead and still go for the overheat then, because I know that the opponent gets to one Ice Beam anyway here, so it didn't really matter for me. But at least now I have a move stored. They're most likely gonna go back into the Reggie Steel exactly, but I can still go for the Night Slash. And with this, this is going to be actually fairly decent. This Night Slash is going to be able to get the shield from the opponent. I'm forced to use a shield here. And I think that Razor Leaf is enough to knock them out. And let's take a look at this. It is definitely enough to knock them out. And they realize this as well, and so they're forced to swap into their Tapu Fini and the Katana is just completely shredding apart the Tapu Fini here. I can swap out, go for the big overheat here as well to one-shot the Tapu Fini and now the Reggie still has nowhere to go. Second to last game for today, we're going to encounter the Magnezone in the lead again, which is going to be a little bit of a trickier matchup for us. But as you're going to see as well, the damage that we take just here from the fast move is just kind of wild and we can go for the Night Slash as well. And I expect them to go for a charge move immediately afterwards. So I decided to actually do a little bit of bold play and go into the Turnator because we got the fast move in here. We're going to be able to knock them out with the incoming Incinerate, which is amazing. So all their energy was completely wasted. Yes, they're going to be able to get their um, Tabu Fini against me, but still, the energy was wasted, which is really important for me. And in comes now the um, Azumarill, actually. Great play by the opponent to try to get some extra energy on both of their Pokemon. But yeah, it's still going to be a little bit of a tough one because they have so much energy on the Tapu Fini. And um, so they can still go for Moonblast later on against my own Tapu Fini, which might be a little bit tricky. And I kind of want to still keep my Turret Knight around, but sadly, they're going to go for a Charge Move here. I wanted to still keep the Overheat for later. But as you're gonna see, I'm forced to go into my Katana and I decide to use a shield here because I know, of course, they have two water type Pokemon left. The Azumarill is basically just like farm down potentially here. And I decide to swap out immediately, expecting that they would go straight for the Surf, which they didn't. And so I decide to let this move go through. And this was a little bit bold as the opponent is gonna go for the Moonblast. I'm gonna go ahead and go for my own Moonblast as well. But this is going to be a very scary um, scenario now because we still have our Katana, but it's insanely low. Can we still farm them down in time? 
Oh, it's going to be close. They're going to go for their own charge move here. It's going to be the surf, of course. And can we find them down? We cannot. We can still go for the leaf blade, though. And this is going to be able to knock them out with just a few HP left. Good game there. Let's take a look at the next opponent. Final opponent for today, we're going to have a horrific lead of the Locario. We can swap out into our Tapu Fini, which will be able to just kind of go for the Surf before they can go for their own Shadow Ball, which is kind of nice. And so we're going to force a shield from the opponent, but also way more importantly, we kind of um, underline the Switch Clock. Because we swapped out here, it's always kind of nice to go for a Charge Move before they swap out, because like this, they're going to be stuck in the matchup of Tapu Fini against the Katana. And this is going to be amazing, because also, I kind of wait out the clock here as you can see because what i want to have is that the opponent aligns their lucario against my turret nader but luckily they didn't go straight into their lucario which is super weird because it just barely allows us to swap out into our turret nader to farm them all the way down and with this it's only going to be the azumo left i'm gonna go for the dragon type move first and honestly at this point you know already this game should be over at least like the only play that i can see that the opponent could do is that they somehow farm us all the way down here and get two ice beams. This is basically the only play that I can see, but never mind, we have two shields anyway, so it does not matter even. Like, it literally does not matter what the opponent tries to do here. We can go for the overheat again, trying to get them even lower, and I can now go ahead and swap out with the overheat stored into my katana. We have the leaf blade there, and so this is going to be game, and the opponent is going to decide to forfeit this one. This is going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like, Check out the two videos on the screen and I'll see you then. Bye bye.